Steve and Eunice, who live two doors away, of course. Yeah. They might come up the back. This is mad, isn't it? I have a sneaking suspicion that we are in the wrong place. I'm just looking for a door now. Oh, yeah. Sorry I'm late. I got us lost. Hello, Jerome. I'm Veronica. Hello, uh, hi, I'm Veronica from Drift. The project is called Home Theatre Ireland. So what we're looking to do is uh, we're looking to find 30 people who live across uh, Dublin 15. And we call those people who sign on, who are interested, um, hosts. So we're going out and about at the moment, meeting all sorts of people. Because uh, we're going to hopefully put, yeah, we're going to hopefully put 30 plays in 30 houses across all of Blanchardstown in the autumn. So this is the kitchen area? Ah, this is great. So again, you probably easily fit 10 in here, yeah. even slightly more. 10, comfortably 10. Yeah. Okay, so I'm trying to understand that. So th this is, as you mean, this is the room for acting? Yes. Yeah. For the play, and yeah. that is like a reception area? Yeah. yeah. And then to each host, uh, we'll have 30 playwrights, mm -hmm. um, and we sort of match up, or who'll be interesting with who, so we match up a host with a playwright. The playwright mm -hmm. and the host will spend a little time together mm -hmm. over two days. Now that doesn't mean they'll spend all of two days. It'll be up to them to decide. Maybe it'll be an hour one day, a couple of hours the next. But the playwright spends time in the host's home with the host mm -hmm. and they write a 20 minute play uh, inspired by their host. Mm. Uh, and then on the 6th, Saturday the 6th of October, all 30 plays perform in all 30 houses across Dublin 15. Uh, there are three performances of each play. Mm. Uh, all the performances happen at five, at seven and at nine. So the whole evening it'll be mad because it'll be so it's five o'clock, seven o'clock and nine o'clock. Yeah, yeah. okay. Ultimately, I think the challenge for us is to get people uh, across age um, and across the geography of yeah. D15. I'm not, I'm not reversing roles here. No. What's your role or what's your position? Oh yeah, I should curious. say that. Yeah. I'm artistic director. I suppose my job entails guiding the artistic centre line, keeping the artistic integrity of the project, guiding decisions along the way from the selection of artists uh, to the pairing of hosts to playwrights so that those matches are fruitful and interesting and perhaps challenging. Hundred and ten thousand people live in Dublin 15. So it is actually the largest single suburb in the country. 24% are under 15. 38% are under 24. So we have really the youngest population of any uh, local authority area. And we have double the national average of new communities living in Dublin 15. Geographically, Dublin 15 is really large. So it is bordered by Castlenock on the east, Ongar to the west, Tyrrellstown to the north and Porterstown and Dizwellstown to the south. So I suppose one of the things that we really looked at is having that geographical spread represented in our house. We also wanted to include uh, children and young people as well as more adults and, and older people as well and having that spread our voice and experience was so important to us and we absolutely actively, proactively went out into Dublin 15 and used all of our contacts uh, to make sure that all of those voices were heard in the project. I was in a home one day and my phone rang and I seen Rena's name. I was like, right. It might be an interesting project that you, you know, you might be interested in. And I thought you mentioned drama. I wasn't quite sure what I heard. I actually seen um, I seen this it advertised on Facebook, and I kind of said to myself, "Oh God, I'm gonna have a go at this." 
I actually say that you meet people and they write a play, but they do the play in your house. And I said, what? It's quite difficult to explain. It sounds a little bit surreal. An artist, one of the artist chosen for me, is going to come to where I live, spend a couple of days with me. I'm going to talk to them, don't know, tell them about my life or my hopes or other things that I'm interested in or, or anything that comes to mind, and they're going to go away then and write on that. I just thought it was a brilliant idea. It's all about community, it's about storytelling, it's about sharing, connecting, learning. So. I turned 50 recently and I have decided that any opportunities that come along I'm just going to say yes to um, because uh, life is too short. Yeah, just the idea of bringing theatre into the local communities and into people's houses, I just think that's amazing. And I like arts anyway, so I might just thought, okay, go for it. I'm in. We're delighted. I'm in, great. I don't know, yeah, I'll give it a shot. What could go wrong, like? There were another set of people, if you like, in the mix. Uh, so there were another set of people that we had to find and they were uh, our community ambassadors. Ambassadors were there to help. It's a third person there so that if somebody, uh, there's somebody to lean into, there's somebody to rely on. And actually they became really, really important when we came close to production because they could take on um, the practical responsibilities when the plays were happening in the home. So the ambassador was there to be, if you like, a friendly face on the ground to help and to enjoy the process and to see it and be a part of it. Um, and they very, very much were. One of the elements we added to the original model uh, where we introduced preparatory workshops for hosts and ambassadors. And essentially what we did was we had, I think it was a two hour workshop, once a month on a Saturday morning for anyone who had signed on to be part of it as either a host or an ambassador. And the idea was to do basic drama workshop, uh, games, have a little bit of fun, introduce the idea of play. Um, and then start talking about, well, what is drama, what is theatre, what are the elements? And giving people an experiential go at that, if you like, this is what it feels like. And for two reasons, one is to understand it, and two is to say it's simple and it's enjoyable, it's not scary, and you can do it. So when they met a playwright for the first time, they weren't sort of going, so what is it you're doing? They had an understanding and it was their understanding. And it was really to bring equity and comfort into the process so that people could get as much out of it as possible. So this morning we gathered all of our hosts, all of our ambassadors and all of our 47 artists together for the first time. It was the most extraordinary thing because we planned for this for so long. You know, we've talked about this project for three years. It has been in serious planning for a year. And today was the first time that we had all of those people. So uh, yeah, there was a lot of excitement in the room. But actually it's that reality of being in the same space with the other people, that suddenly people go, oh, okay, this is what it is, and this is the scale of it, you know? And I, I know I have talked before about uh, the scale and ambition of this project, you know, but actually it's only when you see everybody in the same space and you go, okay, okay, so this is what this is, this is what this means, you know? The thing that I really loved about it was the sense of excitement from everybody. But it was fantastic to see the kind of instant gelling of all of those people. They were really eager to meet each other. But it was, it was just so lovely to see all of those people gelling so quickly, you know. They got into conversation so quickly. This is where a lot of those moments that I talk about happen, you know, those moments of kind of shared understanding where people who have never met, you know, suddenly are in each other's lives and are talking about things that are important to them. That you're being invited into someone's life to have a really profound conversation, really, to, to, for them to open up to you and for you to take what they have given you 
and to represent that in some form or to respond from that. It's, it's an intimacy and uh, there's a great responsibility with that as well, you know. For somebody to meet with you, spend a few hours with you, write a, a play and capture that, capture your essence and your feelings is quite, almost a little bit intimidating. <laughs> The best way to be macro is to be micro, you know, and the way you achieve universality is by being really grounded in the place you are and really paying attention to the place you are and I suppose uh, bearing witness to that. So uh, I think for, for that reason to me it's a really like resonant and poetic project. She's clearly signed on because there's things she really wants to talk about and I kind of, uh, I find that clarity really exciting because it's like it's something to respond to because she goes, I'm interested in XYZ and I go, brilliant, I can maybe add ABC and hopefully something exciting will come from that. And for the first day we're going to spend time walking around the neighbourhood, which is, I find really exciting because it reminds me of my own childhood uh, playing in the streets. And yeah, because that's the imagination. The, the, yeah, children own the streets where they play, you know. So um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. There is a back way that I sometimes go. Yeah. Like, it's over there, it's all the way over there. I'll show you and it has like a giant place to play so that we talk on the way and then we can play. Fantastic. Yeah, that was a cup of tea. That's very important. It's an Irish thing. We serve tea and coffee. We sat down in the dining area and uh, it was really a chat, a fun chat, not too probing. Just tell me your story and I'm here to listen. If you were to write a play about yourself, what would you want to cover? <laughs> What would you want to, to sound like? Is it going to be like a thing that's happened to you or like just your everyday life? Anything. It can be anything, it's a thing. Well, we, don't, we don't know yet. <laughs> that's, the, that's the fun part. She came to meet me for six hours. I said, God, we'd be bored stiff. And then it um, turns out we went. <laughs> we could speak continuously. And it was great. It was really good because we got very well. Rachel's voice was so strong and clear that it was just about really communicating what she'd said. And it was really nice, like, purging myself really in lots of ways because I'm, I'm throwing everything at them. I suppose in an attempt to make sure they get something that they can work with. That was fantastic. I love that. I do that forever now, I have to say. I was surprised by the depth of the uh, relationships that developed and the respect that underpinned those relationships and the integrity of the conversation that happened between playwrights and hosts. On the first weekend, we read all of the plays in direct, and then the second week, uh, the plays are rehearsed because they're written, but now they have to be rehearsed and learned. No water's broken, but I'm ready to go. Believe me, I'm ready. Oh, you've just walked out of the room. More towels? Right. You wrote two <coughs> plays over the two days, and it was very, it was an intense process. And the idea of the responsibility of of representing it. It was very important um, for us to be uh, sensitive to their to, to their experience and, and uh, to represent it well. You kind of feel like, am I going to take liberties with this or am I, you know what I mean? And yet you have to still be truthful because somebody has given you their their own experience and their own life. You kind of just have to trust your gut a lot more. You have to go with the first, the, your first instinct is kind of the only, it's the best thing to trust and to lean into. And I only finished it last night like everybody else, so it's kind of a very, very, um, it's a weird experience. Oh, wait, I'm going too fast. I have to slow down. Soft shortness. And then as you think about it, you know you still have a journey to do, which is him leaving. Okay, which brings it back to him. Yes, and okay. the immediate situation, you know? So one of the, I suppose, the added elements of the Home Theatre Ireland project is that we engaged six directors. Each director worked with five artists. And we, we knew that some theatre makers may just want an eye on the piece. They just would like an outside eye and that would be absolutely fine. But that perhaps some of the performers would like a little bit more support. But we felt that the directors could really bring, um, I suppose, a, a different element to the project and yeah, just support them in their work. Bread rolls and hugs, a cup of coffee, or some news. Did your one on the road have a baby, did she? <laughs> Indeed. 
believe she did. <laughs> Take your coat off. The heating will rise in a minute. Uh, and we start bringing people oh. down. Yeah. And maybe just warm. Yeah, we can just give us an off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is going to happen. Jesus yeah. wept. <laughs> I was very nervous, extremely nervous. And I was thinking, what are my family going to think of this? Especially the people that know me closest. No, they're just, I think they're going to come in a few minutes. You're on your way. Okay. Right. Who wants a cushion? Do you want a cushion? I don't, like, I wouldn't say I'm an anxious person, but like, I think it's very out of my comfort zone. Because I was excited about it up to that point, and I thought, Jesus, what's my mother and father going to think about it? And then I said, no, it's great. I don't want to go there. This is definitely going to be an emotional leave. Yeah. 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 Listen, did it's out the door. Did it. Oh, to be somebody coming. Play in your house. Don't they have a telly? What is different and special about each of us? And how did we all get here? I was looking for a structure to enable Drake to really engage with our community. And how can you do that that makes sense? And how can you do that that makes sense to the people that you're working with from a, a community perspective? But it actually was about that kind of two-way relationship. The play that the artists created, inspired by our whole story, was called A Gift. It was about them working with us and giving us something, but it was, it was also about us giving something back to them. I'm not sure what just happened. It's a bit mad to have a performance in your living room. Um, but yeah, it was incredible. That was mad. The whole experience of doing these has been fantastic. It was incredible. She actually brought a tear to me out on stage. It's just been so much bigger than that and, and we're really grateful for the opportunity it's to have been part of that. I get to see myself in another person. Mm. I get to see myself, someone else doing me. 
and I think that was really, really interesting. It was absolutely incredible. Funny and yet thoughtful and interesting. Lots and lots and lots of laughs. You can feel that connection um, much more than, you know, you <laughs> just if it weren't in their house. And to be welcomed into their house, I think it's a really unique theatre experience. It's something that you've never seen before, but it seems so natural. Yeah. It's great. It feels great. Genuinely feels liberating. Yeah, it does. The intensity of the relationships that were developed over a really short space of time was really quite extraordinary to, to be witness to, you know. There was such a massive uh, sharing, I think, and um, huge connections between people. Like that went above and beyond anything that I had ever hoped for or ever thought would happen in such a short space of time. Yeah, it was a massive undertaking. And I suppose now that I'm looking back on it, uh, I'm just so glad we did it.